Supercross and FIM World Championship is in AT&T Park in beautiful San Francisco, California for round number five of the 2009 season. CBS Sports coverage of Monster Energy AMA Supercross is brought to you in high definition. Hi everybody, Ralph Shaheen alongside our CBS Sports Supercross champion, Jeff Emmick, as we get ready to go racing with heat number one here in San Francisco, the Air Force starting grid scrolling across the top of the screen. And Jeff, right away in heat number one, we get to see the reigning champ with that bright number one on the front of his bike, Chad Reed. And tonight is a night where Chad Reed needs to get things going. He needs a win here tonight. It all starts with winning the qualifying heat. Here we go, nine riders will transfer straight to the main. Josh Grant gets a tremendous start while Reed gets buried deep in the pack. Josh Grant, the winner at Anaheim, won a huge victory to open the season. And he's right out in front here in San Francisco. Ben Coisey on the 979 sits in second. Ivan Tedesco on that red Honda number nine fighting over third place with Josh Hill on the factory Yamaha. And our two fastest qualifiers, Chad Reed and Ryan Villapoto, had mid-pack starts around the first turn. Villapoto actually got shuffled way to the back. So we're gonna see if he can work his way through. Remember, he's coming off of a third place finish last week. Matt Bonney on the number 54 sits in fifth position as we watch Josh Hill having one of the better runs of his early start to the 2009 season. Hill, a winner in Minneapolis at the Petrodome a year ago, got his first career Supercross victory there. And Jeff, and it's been a struggle for him so far this season. Oh, one of the tough blocks gets knocked down off the top of the corner, right in the path of Chad Reed, who gets around it, and he also gets around Cole Siebler on the 79. Here's the section. First lap of the opening practice today. Chad Reed made a slight mistake, jumped off the side of the track and went down really hard off of that first triple. But as champions do, he has to regroup, get it together. This heat race has not started like he wanted, but he has the opportunity here in the next six laps to make it finish like he wants. He's up to sixth place right now. The name's scrolling across the top of the screen and our Yamaha scoring leaderboard those are the riders who hold transfer spots in the top nine straight to the main. Those in blue don't. And one of those riders in blue, currently in 11, number two right here, Ryan Villapoto on the factory Monster Energy Kawasaki. One of the best riders in the field, Jeff, struggling early here tonight in San Francisco. Well, Villapoto, like I said, he was around the first turn in about third or fourth, but got pushed off the side of the track and just shuffled way back. So he has his work cut out for him. They've been working so hard with this team. We spent some time uh, with, with the Kawasaki team and the Pro Circuit Kawasaki team uh, earlier today, and he really feels that he has the strength of, of the team behind him and everybody working together. Villapoto fifth in the points, looking for his first win. A reigning champion, of, well, not a reigning champion, but a former champion in the lights class, which is the stepping stone up to the bigger bikes, the Supercross class. There they ride 250s, here are the bigger 450s, and he picks up another position. So Villapoto charging up into the top nine. He holds a transfer spot, and we'll be right back to San Francisco. CBS Sports Spectacular presents the Monster Energy AMA Supercross Series, sponsored by Toyota, moving forward. Monster Energy, unleash the beast. And by Honda, world leader in power sports. When you want the best, it's a Honda. You can train long. Welcome back to San Francisco, California. You're watching second, third, fourth, and fifth. Josh Hill has just moved in front of McCoisey to take over second, and now Coisey loses two more as Tedesco on the number nine, the Honda rider, and on that rock star Makita Suzuki, Chad Reed, the yellow bike, just takes over fourth position. Boy, Chad Reed is methodically working his way through the pack here and gaining momentum and gaining confidence. It's been a tough couple of weeks for the reigning champion who started off the season so strong, kind of lost his mojo the last couple of weeks, but now here in San Francisco trying to get it back. He so desperately needs a win to, he's got the points lead in the championship, but more so than the points lead, Chad Reed needs momentum going his way. 
Uh, and it's going to be tough to get any from the Red Bull Honda rider, Ivan Tedesco, who's had a very good season as well. And that number nine, Tedesco, riding some of the best races we've seen him put together in recent weeks. Well, and, and, and Tedesco, who was a two-time like Supercross champion, came into the Supercross class, the top tier, and, and has really struggled. But like you said, this year, he really has got things together. And I think that a lot of that has to do with Team Honda. They have a new machine this year. So, and uh, Ivan Tedesco's found a lot of success on this new bike. You caught a glimpse of Ryan Villapoto on the green Kawasaki number two, getting around Cole Siebler. He's now to six. He's in a transfer spot. This one winding down. Uh, talking about new bikes, the reigning champ here, Chad Reed, won two Supercross championships riding Yamaha now. He's on Suzuki this year, which was a major change for him. Really has enjoyed the change. He likes working with the new team. Just has liked everything about it. But, Ralph, it has not it, you know, equated to a win. Well, that's a and problem that's... for Chad Reed, Jeff. He, he had four races this year. He had a third at Anaheim one, and he's had three straight second place finishes. I mean, unfortunately, he... the guy that had three straight wins those same races, he finished second. James Stewart, we'll see him in heat number two coming up. Here's Josh Grant, the guy who won at Anaheim, and he's put together a string of top five finishes this year. A first, a third, and two fifths the last two weeks. Yeah, and, and remember, remember that crash I talked about Chad Reed had in the opening lap of practice? Josh Grant comes by and hits Chad's bike and goes down also in a really violent crash. But look what Josh Grant has done this year, has rebounded. Just an incredible ride. He has blown everybody away here. See him at the top of your screen just going out. Just ahead of, of Hill, Grant has really been on the gas. Checkered flag falling as Josh Grant wins on the Joe Gibbs Racing Yamaha. Taking a look at our Honda results page from heat number one, Grant Hill, Ivan Tedesco, who actually had the fastest lap in this heat, finishes third. They all go, including Josh Hansen, on to the main. Eric Sorby will go to the last chance qualifier with the rest of the riders. And we go down to the victory podium where you'll find the third member of our crew, Aaron Bates. Josh Grant changed up basically everything there was to change on his dirt bike from first practice till now. Josh, you changed the subframe, the shock, the tires, the suspension. How much of a difference did that make on a slippery track such as this one? Uh, you know, it, it helped me out a lot. You know, they did a lot of work on the track, and, you know, it actually really came around. It was really rocky this morning, and, uh, I don't know, just got off to a good start, and, you know, that's all I could ask for, really. It's, uh, it's what you need here. It's one-line track, and as long as I can do that in the main, I should be up there. Congratulations on your first heat race win of the season. On the road again Going places that I've never been Seeing things that I may never see again I can't wait to get on the road again yeah, we're on the road. 17 races in 18 weeks. Here's our Toyota moving forward schedule. We're headed back down I-5 to Anaheim, California. Come see us in person. Get your tickets at supercrossonline.com. There you see the 30-second board. That means we're 30 seconds away or less from the drop of the gate for the start of heat number two. And our look, as you see the Thor starting grid across the top of the screen, there you see it, number seven on the Yamaha, the San Manuel machine, James Stewart. On board with Josh Summy on that MDK bike. Josh Summy right next to the starting box over here. He's got a nice look. He's to the left of the box. He's got a nice look at the inside here. Let's see what kind of start he can get. There's Stewart. It's going to be Mike Gillespie on the Rockstar Nikita Suzuki who gets the whole shot. Stewart oh. gets stacked up, and then one rider down, three riders, four riders down hard. That looks like Tim Ferry. That's what I was going to say, Tim Ferry too, on the Kawasaki up there, the green bike, one yeah. of the veteran riders. And Davey Millsap's in there, too, I believe. Yeah, wow. But look at Mike Alessi. He is the whole shot master. Each week, he keeps getting off the gate, puts himself in a great position. Yeah, he's in front of Stewart, and Stewart is right in front of Andrew Short on the factory Honda. And uh, you keep a look, keep an eye on number seven here. This is the fastest man on the planet. Last week in Houston, James Stewart really found his mojo, and it was the James Stewart that we have seen in the past where he is just so aggressive, and he had that, that swagger about him. And I'm telling you, his best part's through the whoops. Here he goes, right up the inside, and around him he goes, James Stewart. 
gets around Michael Lessie. And the crowd starts to cheer here in San Francisco as one of the most famous riders in the sport takes the lead. Watch the green bike in the center of your screen. The 29, the red Honda just stands Tim Ferry up. Then Millsaps, and Josh Summy. Oh, here's Summy's on board. Watch this view. So that's this is through the first turn. He comes into the second turn. Here's Ferry just on top. He goes down. Summy runs Some, right wow. over Tim Ferry and then goes down. Luckily, all three riders are up. Here's the pass for the lead, right around the outside. That's what you call hitting the afterburner, Ralph. He just absolutely demolished Alessi through there. Wow, God. this is that section. Stewart has, when it has came to the whoop section, in his racing career since he's been in Supercross, he has shown a bravery and a, a, a talent. He just lifts the front wheel, shifts to two or three gears higher, and lets it rip. He is not afraid. So much of it when it comes to the whoops is having confidence and nobody is more confident in their skills than James Stewart. No question about it. Michael Lessie doing a nice job of holding on to second as Andrew Short tries to close in on the number 29 Honda. But Stewart starting to pull away here in heat number two with Wyndham and Chisholm bringing up the back of the top five. Francisco battle for second brewing. Here comes Andrew Short on the 29 Honda. Alessi oh, makes a with mistake. the problem. Alessi bogs, and here comes Short to the inside. He's around him, and Andrew Short on the Red Bull Honda now moves himself up into second. And that was a very smart move that Andrew made because he once he made the pass in that tight right-hander. Here's Let's, here's Alessi makes some mistakes. He high sides. Short gets to the inside. Pulls up, but it's, but the fast line is to go to the left. But Andrew wisely goes to the inside to block that block that line. Great move, Andrew Short. James Stewart out front. His best lap of 48.7, Jeff. 48.7. His best time in qualifying was only a 49.4. So James Stewart really on the cast once again here in San Francisco got the Yamaha dialed in and he really has in the last two weeks has found a flow and a certain confidence that you know that, that that comes from the team working together this is a new machine for James this year the team has finally got it to his liking just annihilating this racetrack is James Stewart in the competition along the way and he race number two here's a three running battle now for second short and Alessi Honda, Suzuki, and then the Honda of Kevin Windham on that Geico Power Sports bike. And I tell you, I'm very impressed with Michael Lessie and his composure here. He made that mistake, lost the position, but has hung right in there. And remember, last summer, Alessi was in a horrendous crash, uh, and he really has came back strong. Checkered flag for James Stewart, the winner of Heat 2. Battle for second, continuing. That's Davey Millsaps, who's back in 10th, fighting for the final transfer spot. There you see him. He was involved in that opening lap crash. Paul Carpenter and McCoy battling it out. Millsaps is going to lose out, and he will be going to the LCQ. To the last chance qualifier goes Davey Millsaps. So nine more riders coming out of heat number two to the main event. Daniel McCoy will get the final ticket to the main out of that heat. Davey Millsaps. On the Honda, the factory rider is going to go to the last chance qualifier. Tough night for Davey. We go to Aaron. That's five for five heat race wins for James Stewart. James, you said that you weren't 100% uh, happy with your progress, but that was a 48-second lap time. Are you happy now? Uh, I guess uh, I didn't even see that. You know, uh, track's really slippery. You know, it's all going to be about to start, and uh, you know, I felt pretty good. You know, I'm having fun out here, and then. Uh, you know, I just want to thank my team, Samuel Yamahas, and uh, I want to thank uh, the people I never get to thank, Astros Medical. If it wasn't for you guys, my knees would be all done, so thank you. The final two riders, Davey Millsaps and Heath Voss, on our Yamaha results page will get the last two tickets to today's main event as they transfer out of the last chance qualifier. CBS Sports coverage of Monster Energy AMA Supercross will continue after these messages and a word from your local station.
AT&T Park in San Francisco, California, home of Major League Baseball's San Francisco Giants. But tonight, it's super cross that these fans have packed the grandstands here in the city by the bay to watch. And they're getting a great show as the best super cross athletes in the world are in competition here. One of those riders is Michael Lessie, who's coming back from one of the nastiest crashes I've ever seen. Mike explained about the long road to recovery in our Caterpillar feature. Mentally, it's been definitely hard for me coming back from all the injuries I had in 2008. Uh, first off with my collarbone in Supercross, uh, my big crash at Redbud in the summer, um, breaking both my scapulas, three ribs, and my puncture in my lung, a massive concussion. It's just mentally been really hard for me to get out there and be at the competition level that the guys are at right now and they've been riding during the last couple of months and I've been just training and, and uh, recovering from my injuries. My dad's kind of took a little bit more of a step back this, this Supercross season, taking a little bit more pressure off me. My dad's not right there in my ear, you know, telling me, you know, you have to do this right, you have to do this better, you know. It's not like that at all. I'm just going out there just racing to, to the pen potential that I know I can be. The rivalry between Villapoto and I, uh, it goes way back to amateur days. And I mean, I, when I see him in the pits, I generally wave. He waves back. You know, uh, it, it's not it's not what people think where it's like we hate each other and we're not good friends at all. You're not getting paid to, to be the other guy's friend. You're getting paid to go out there to race to win. Wow, Michael Lessie comes flying out of the box. When I was a little kid, I just I couldn't wait to watch Jeremy McGrath race. And it was just always a treat to watch him because he was so smooth and so fluid and did everything perfect. And uh, I can understand how kids are looking up to me now and showing the kids that you have to be a good person and get out there, have fun, and be respectful to the fans. You know, uh, there comes a point in time when you have to start growing up. And I feel that that is where I am right now in the stage of my life and I have to start growing up. And uh, it's a good transition for me. And I see a lot of things more clear. Mike has made an incredible recovery from that very nasty accident a year ago come back and even get a whole shot here tonight it is heat race hi and once again everybody ralph sheen jeff hammock with you now jeff you bounced back from some very serious injuries in your racing career was it tougher for you to come back on the mental side to get ready to race again or just to rehab on the physical side well the doctors and the therapists they get the physical side back it's the mental side and building your confidence because we spoke supercross is all about confidence mike has the desire and the determination to do that also, Michael Leslie is a very good starter. So week after week, he gets the whole shots, puts himself in a good position. That's going to build his confidence quickly. Well, we've got one of the nicest winter nights you'll find here in San Francisco. And these fans are enjoying the weather and the racing here in San Francisco. James Stewart has been absolutely shredding up the competition the last three weeks. Three races in a row, he has stood on the top step of the podium as the winner. Tonight, he goes for four in a row. As you take a look at our MMI race reset, 20 riders in our main event for 20 laps, Josh Grant and James Stewart, heat race winners. As we get set to go here in San Francisco, the 32nd board is up. The gate ready to drop, main event time. Here you see Chad Reed, our Monster Energy starting grid across the screen here for you, Stuart Grant. And there you see Chad Reed, and Chad Reed, not a good gate pick tonight, Jeff. Our points leader had eight gate pick with that fourth, fourth place finish in the heat. Stuart, first gate pick, all about the start. Stuart gets to the corner first, and Reed gets a great start. He's third, 
right behind Michael Lessie. Then he gets hung up on the outside. Here he comes charging back alongside of Tim Ferry. Or I should say, Bill Pono, who's up to third. James Stewart out front and flying. Chad Reed in fourth. Alessi Villapoto. This is just that this is the start that Stewart needed. He has been on fire tonight. Villapoto tries to the inside here with Reed coming up on the outside. And meanwhile, while these three get bottlenecked here in a three rider battle for second, James Stewart is already gapping them for the lead. There you see the blue Yamaha of Stewart starting to pull away. Reed now up to third around Villapoto, but he has not gotten around Alessi just yet. Okay, let's see what Chad Reed can do. This is the best start that he has had since the opening round where he actually was the fastest. He was making passes on James Stewart for the lead. Chad Reed needs to regroup regain that momentum that he so desperately needs here in this main event. There you see Reed with the red plate, with the bright white number one, since he is the reigning champ on that rock star Makita Suzuki. His teammate, Mike Alessi, holds up second. No teammate orders here. Every man for himself in Supercross competition. And what Chad Reed cannot allow to happen is for Alessi to hold him up in the lap time and let James Stewart get away. Reed needs to pass his teammate and put in the absolute best laps that he can or the number seven bike will be gone. It's a two and a half second gap right now between Stewart and Reed. The Australian rider, a two-time Supercross Series champion. Won the title in 2004, came back and won it again last year. There you saw Villapoto on that green Kawasaki and Stewart off in the distance, flying through the Bay Area sky. Now you see Chad Reed really starting to make some moves. He's got a line right through here as he's gonna try to sneak to the inside. No, he's not close enough to Alessi. Jeff, we saw that piece earlier in the show about the brutal crash that Mike Alessi had this past summer. He has worked his way back, gotten stronger and faster, and gained more confidence each and every week. And it is really showing here tonight. In the previous weeks, he'd get a rocket start and then fall back. Not happening tonight. Mike Alessi's best lap. The last time around, 52nd point one. James Stewart, a 49.9. So that's only two tenths of a second off of Stewart. So Mike Alessi clearly putting in one of the best rides that we've seen him ever put in in AMA Supercross. Unfortunately, on that last lap, while they ran quick, they lost half a second each to Stewart. Reed to the inside. He's right there. Almost a little bit of contact, but no gift from his teammate. Now he makes the move. And Reed is through to second. And here's Villapoto and Alessi. Villapoto to the inside. And there's no love loss between those two, but a very clean pass. Oh, and Villapoto tries to make a move on Reed as well. And now Josh Grant comes in on that number 33 Yamaha to make it a four rider battle for second. Where Villapoto had to close down on the inside there, guard that line, and in, in return, he came really close to Reed there. But how about Josh Grant, 33, on the Toyota Yamaha? It has been his night winning as he raced, really putting together phenomenal rides. And this guy has had a huge confidence boost, won the opening round of Supercross, but I like what I'm seeing out of him tonight. He is really fluent. He is very confident. He is dialed in. Still watching Alessi dealing with Grant just to show you how Mike has improved over the year. The first two races, Anaheim won at Phoenix. He racked up an 11th place finish both nights. Then on to Anaheim two, he got ninth in Houston a week ago, a seventh. So here he is sitting in fourth. And Josh Grant, the winner at Anaheim one, tied for second in the points. He needs another top five or better. Jeff, he's had a top five in each of the four rounds this year. As we're on lap six of 20, last time across the stripe, our leader was a 49.5, Chad Reed, a 50.1, six tenths of a second off. So Chad Reed really has got to knuckle down and put it together if he wants to make a run for the win here tonight. Grant right behind Alessi. Grant came into the year. Here he is with the move on Alessi. Oh, a little bit of contact there. And both riders stay up.
up right and continue on, but no change of position. Now to the inside again, more contact. Boy, that's some heavy beating and banging. And Andrew Short comes through on the Honda, and Alessi loses two spots. Well, all three of these riders have a reputation of uh, making some hard passes. Andrew Short right in the middle of it. Jeff, but do you consider that a clean but hard pass? I consider that Supercross racing, Ralph. That's what you have to do on a track like this. And now Alessi losing more positions as Ivan Tedesco comes through as well in the number nine Honda. And you can see what that can do for a rider's mental state. Completely shook uh, uh, Mike Alessi up. Boom, boom, boom. Dropped three positions on that one lap. And he's got Kevin Windham and Josh Hill breathing down his neck now. Yeah, great he, start, great start for Alessi, yes. but he really, midway or close to the midway point here, has really backed off. And like he said, it's tough to be in the same racing shape as these riders because they're not recovering from the massive injuries that he's had. He's in seventh right now. Wyndham rides in eighth. Wyndham finished second in the championship a year ago to Chad Reed, came into the season of the veteran rider, one of those Hotly considered a title contender as we go back to the front and James Stewart putting on another incredible performance in this 2009 season. Well, you know, James is making it look easy, Jeff, but it hasn't been all smooth for Stewart so far tonight. Well, Stewart sometimes the master of just threading the needle and right here. So close, that could have ended the night, ended the championship. You see, he tried to get right there and catch that rut as he took off. And you know, this is a rocky, gravelly soil. The tires just came, just busted loose. But Stewart, how many times have we seen him throughout his career pull off, you know, situations like that? That's why week in, week out, these riders strength train, cardiovascular train. Stewart knows how to ride at the absolute you know, ragged edge and reel it back in when you need to. You know, kudos to his trainer, Alden Baker, for keeping him in tip-top, you know, physical condition there. And this is that same section. Yep. And not only that, but the fact that this San Manuel Yamaha was not dialed in the way James liked at the very beginning of the year, and the bike was giving him fits, even though he was getting wins, but the crew has worked so hard to bring this bike around to where James now has mastered the control of this machine. Take a look at the whole shot right there, the center of your screen, and then the yellow bike of Alessi looked like he almost had it, but number seven by a wheel just squeezes Alessi out of the picture, and then across the stripe, number seven, James Stewart. Had a good conversation with James' his dad, Big James Stewart, earlier today at the Ryder Walk Around. And I said, what's the one thing about James that has surprised you the most as a father watching your son mature as a racer and as a, as a person? He said, well, now he finally realized his daddy was right. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Great father-son relationship between James and his father. A true motocross family. In fact, they say his younger brother, Malcolm, even more talented than James. We'll see that one in the future. We'll see if James can hang on for the win when we come back. Stewart still leading here in San Francisco at AT&T Park. Ralph Sheen, Jeff Emig, and Aaron Bates along with you. But boy, with 10 laps to go at the halfway point, James Stewart still wrestling that big Yamaha 450 all around this racetrack, Jeff. Well, James Stewart right now has a six and a half second lead over Chad Reed, but with 10 laps to go on a very difficult track like we have here in San Francisco, this race isn't over. They're James is going to start to get into the lap riders who are having problems with their own race. That's why they're getting lapped. And remember this soil here tonight with so much rocky, gravelly base to it. We've seen that, you know, it's easy for even the best rider to make mistakes. So Chad Reed putting in a solid ride in second, but he, well, if he could cross his fingers, that's what he would do. He's hoping that Stewart's going to make a slight mistake, allow him to close up. This would be the fourth second place finish for Chad Reed this year. And you know, one thing that's interesting about the racing here in San Francisco is the first race was held here back in 2003. It was won by Ricky Carmichael. And every year, Aaron, 
here in San Francisco. The winner has come from Florida, and it could happen here again tonight since that's where James Stewart lives. That's right. Well, he's used to very warm conditions, but guys, anything can happen at this point still with eight laps left to go. As the evening progresses and the track is starting to deteriorate, all of those pebbles are being sifted to the top, and literally it is like marbles out here. What is happening is causing a little bit less traction in the front end. If that front end does slide out, it's anybody's game. Well, you're exactly right, Aaron. And uh, like I said, even the best riders, they're they're trying to, you know, work their way and thread the needle past these tough blocks and to find that rut, which is only three or four inches wide at this speed, to actually thread the front tire right through that position. You start to dig down. Some of the bigger rocks start to come up here late in the main event. So very, very tricky track with the number two of Ryan Villapoto on that monster Kawasaki. Putting it together, last lap around, 50.5. The rider he's closing up on, Chad Reed, a 50.7. So this race for second isn't over yet either. No, it's not. And Villapoto has been getting better and better. Had his career best finish on a Supercross bike just a week ago in Houston, where he made the podium for the first time and finished third. He might improve that if he can catch up to Reed and take over second. But how about Josh Grant here, 33, Toyota Yamaha. Been in the top five every race, plus a win at the opening round. As a rookie, phenomenal season so far. Riding for Joe Gibbs Racing, the Hall of Fame football coach. Well, and what comes to mind when you think Joe Gibbs? Team building. That's what Josh Grant says has been the difference. Riding on this team is the, is the cohesiveness that the, that the team has. And now everybody works together is what is really helping him in his rookie season in Supercross. Coach Gibbs' son, Coy, runs the Supercross effort. Here's the battle for sixth position. Kevin Windham and Ivan Tedesco. Windham just in front of him. As we fade, fade into uh, some of the Team Honda riders here. Actually, Kevin Windham, 14, on the Geico Power Sports Honda. Tedesco, Red Bull Honda, which is considered the factory team. Geico team is a support team. But remember, last year, it was Kevin Windham was the supreme Honda rider. And just in front of them there, you see him to the far right of your screen, Andrew Short, another one of the Red Bull factory Honda riders. And for the big red, it has been a problem of injuries in recent years. They got their guys all good and healthy, and it's paying off. They're all running very well. They're all on the top of the points chase, too. Uh, Short, Tedesco, and Wyndham all in the thick of the points chase this year, all with good finishes. Yeah, and, and what's interesting about the Hondas this year, they have a totally new redesigned bike that has fuel injection. Oh, oh Tedesco, Tedesco had down. a problem. Tedesco back on the track. But boy, he had a big problem, and Josh Hill and Mike Gillespie, Millsap's all going to get in front of him. Well, what I was going to say is that Tedesco has really agreed with this bike, you know, along with uh, Suzuki and Kawasaki. They have the fuel injection, so it's this whole new world for the motorcycle manufacturers. Uh, Tedesco, we're going to take a look at the replay here. He just really had it together. This is that section here where James Stewart went, or almost went down. Tedesco does go down, and uh, <laughs> luckily, for the flag crew there, he just just gets out of the way, but that really has slowed the momentum for Ivan Tedesco, who has been solid each and every main event here. You see he's 33 seconds behind Stewart. Yeah, Ivan has had some 36 seconds. Very good runs. He's been in the top 10 each and every round. His best finish of fourth at Phoenix. He's 10th right now. So he would at least keep that string of top tens going. Well, and, and more so than just being inside of the top ten, if, if we've really seen a rejuvenation and a, a new confidence uh, that Ivan Tedesco hasn't had since he left the lights class. Fight for eighth here. Davey Millsaps had to come through the last chance qualifier. That's him on the red Honda, number 18. And he has closed in on Alessi, who continues to drop down the running order. But this Mil fight now continuing for eight between Alessi and Millsaps. Well, and for Millsaps, this is, uh, he's going for his best finish of the year, where last year he won a main event. So Millsaps really trying to put something together into the inside of Alessi. He's going to make the move. Millsaps has not been inside the top ten until now. His best finish, three tenth place finishes. The last three rounds began the year with a 12th at Anaheim, and now he's inside that top 10. But boy, speaking of streaks, yeah, and this streak is going to be for wins. Four of them, if he can hang on, and what a year it's been for Yamaha, too, Jeff. 
in winning the four races that, or actually the first four races, this would be the fifth win in a row for Yamaha as a manufacturer. This is the best start to a season for them since the year 2000, when they won the first eight rounds. And the way they're going, they might blow right through that. In fact, that year they won 14 of 16 races. This year we've got 17. Yeah, this has just been a phenomenal start to the season once again for James Stewart, who uh, went down with Reed there in the opening round while he was leading. Uh, technically um, and uh, it was interesting because we uh, early in the season we James was winning but we didn't really think that he, he looked great They're, like we have seen him perform better but he was still winning so he won when he wasn't feeling good now he has absolutely demolished the competition getting the start that he needs taking the checkered flag with uh, just you know a little less than two laps to go it looks like he's on his way to another one battle for fifth here it is, a pair of Honda riders. Andrew Short on the red 29 and quickly closing in Kevin Windham on the 14. See, the, those main lines there, how you have to take these outside lines are really starting to get dug in. It was a difficult track here tonight. And what we, what we saw was when a rider really tried to apply the pressure and just give it that little extra, you know, effort, it was too much. And so, you know, these riders here, the uh, Supercross riders, just like James Stewart, he knew that the start was going to be key, put together phenomenal laps all night, really showed why he is the fastest man on the planet. Final lap for James Stewart here in San Francisco. What a great feeling this has to be, huh, after that opening round. His fourth win in a row. James Stewart to the checkered flag in San Francisco. Sam Manuel, Band of Mission Indians, Yamaha, once again on top of the podium. Reed comes across in second. Villapoto with a very strong ride in third. And Andrew Short will round out the top five. Kevin Windham crosses over the jump in sixth position. But it's this team who is taking all the glory in the Supercross class this season as James Stewart picks up his fourth win, his fourth win in a row, and Yamaha has their fifth win in five races in 2009. James Stewart dialing in the bike and dialing out the competition as he wins again here in San Francisco, and we'll be back to meet him. The new one. Sports Spectacular presents the Back to AT&T Park. Fans starting to file out here. And the party moves to the victory podium. There you see them all down there. And the top three will be there. And we'll meet them in just a second. James Stewart, Chad Reed, and Ryan Villapoto, who ties his career best finish with another third place. Very strong ride for Ryan Villapoto. Inching up, getting better each and every week. Chad Reed unfortunately continues to finish second to the man who keeps winning, James Stewart. But let's meet the rider who finished third. He's with Aaron. Ryan Villapoto must have liked the taste of the podium last weekend, making it two weeks in a row. Ryan, you said as long as you could race against your competitors and race that same speed, that was all it was going to take. Was tonight the same case? <laughs> yeah, you know, it was uh, got a decent start, and I was able to uh, to get on Chad's back wheel once he passed me. and. Uh, you know, stay with him the whole the whole 20 laps, and uh, that's my goal is to, to race with uh, James and Chad. And tonight it was Chad, and uh, I couldn't have done it without uh, you know my team, Monster Energy Kawasaki, and uh, you know everybody, Jeff Fox, Parts Limited, Thor, Oakley, um, and all you guys. Thank you. Congratulations on a tremendous effort tonight. This championship will go all the way down to Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada, the first weekend in May. We're going to be there. It should be an outstanding way to wrap up this 2009 championship. And here's why that title fight will probably go all the way to the end of the year. James Stewart inching closer to Chad Reed. At the end of the first round, he was 19th place in the points. Now he's second, only six behind Reed. to finished second again here tonight, Aaron. Well, a tremendous performance from start to finish tonight for Chad Reed. Chad, the day started off extremely rough with that crash in first practice. Are you happy with the outcome? Yeah, I mean, I'm real happy, you know, we continue to stay on the podium and uh, got a great start and that's that's the main thing, you know, just uh, 
my heat race was was horrible, and uh, we just went back and worked on some things, and and I felt a lot better in the main. So uh, you know, hats off to all the Rockstar Makita Suzuki guys, guys at Thor Parts and Limited, Scott and Bridgeland. You know, t together we all worked hard, and uh, I'm happy with the second tonight. As uh, James rode a great race, and as did Ryan behind me. So uh, it, was, it was tough, stuff out there. Take us through your mistake that happened this afternoon in your crash. Uh, it was the first lap of practice, and. Uh, I just jumped the triple, you know, the triples are pretty much the same length every weekend and I went for it and uh, I was a little bit off to the right and, and the bail was sticking out and we met and uh, just collected me. I just went straight up over the bars and then uh, Josh Grant came behind me and hit my bike. So it was pretty ugly. I got pretty, uh, pretty bruised up, but you know, them, them's the breaks when you make stupid mistakes. Congratulations on making up to the podium once again. Taking a look at our Toyota moving forward replay, going to the whole shot. Well, it was all about James Stewart here tonight on that blue Yamaha. Gets through the first turn, squeezes Alessi out and across the line. No looking back, James Stewart all the way. And we go back to Aaron. Well, a tremendous performance from start to finish tonight for James Stewart. James, tonight you made this look way too easy, but how tricky was this track this evening? I mean, the track uh, was really tricky, you know, I was super slippery and stuff, and, uh, you know, this carburetor still getting it done, you know, I thought this fuel injection is going to be tough tonight, but, uh, you know, I got to thank the guys from Samuel Yamaha, you know, I mean, we've been uh, working hard, and I think it's now starting to show, so uh, I can't ask for anything better. Congratulations on keeping the momentum rolling. He's attacking that record book as he now moves, Yeah, you, know, you see the four for four wins, but he also moves to fourth overall in the wins category all time and Jeff is such a young man such a long way yet to go in his career well and he's on the same pace for main events started uh, versus main events one up to 28 now 29 as the great Jeremy McGrath so Jason big McGrath shoes to fill, yes. who's considered the king of the sport the king of supercross and of course Ricky Carmichael as well the goat the greatest of all time and there you see it look at that in front of Rick Johnson closing in on Reed, Carmichael, and McGrath. And you have to think that this number and this rider right here, this man, 72 wins, that's what James Stewart's after. Well, and that's why he's considered the king of Supercross, Jeremy McGrath. Old Showtime really, really was spectacular in his day. And James Stewart <laughs> know, right? right there. Yeah, I, know. He, well, I, was, I was usually watching it from behind, <laughs> but it was uh, he was a tremendous competitor, as is James Stewart. CBS Sports coverage of Monster Energy AMA Supercross continues Sunday, February 15th at noon Eastern when the series heads to Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego. Coming up next, final round coverage of the FBR Open from the TPC of Scottsdale. For Jeff Emig and Aaron Bates, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from San Francisco, where James Stewart is your winner.